Ciao ragazzi, I'm Danilo and welcome back to another video. Today we have a very special and highly requested video. In fact, I received so many comments about a guitar collection video update. So, here we are finally. I'm gonna walk you through all my guitars, from my very first one to my latest acquisition. Also, I'm a bit sad to announce that uh, two guitars that you may expect to see are not longer here with me. And those guitars are the Music Man Majesty and the PRS Silver Sky. I know, it's such a shame, but sometimes you gotta move on. That being said, before we begin, I just wanna quick thanks Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives that offers thousands of inspiring classes on topics like music production, video editing, but also design, photography and many more. Marques Brownlee is my favorite creator here on YouTube and he has an amazing class on Skillshare that I really suggest you to check out. It's called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. It's really well made, easy to understand and very useful. Skillshare is specifically curated for learning. There are no ads and there are always launching new premium classes. It's never too late to learn something new and I think Skillshare is the best place to do it. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can start exploring your own creativity. If you'd like to start a YouTube career or simply learn how to produce your own videos, this is your chance. Check out the link down in the description below. Okay, now let's get into the video. The first guitar I want to show you today, it was actually my very first guitar I ever got and it is the Yamaha Pacifica. Still completely stock after all these years and I think it was already too good for me as a first guitar actually. Also, I'm gonna play the first guitar riff I have ever learned on this guitar. Can you name the riff? Leave a comment down below. Defender Stratocaster American Standard. This was my first real and serious guitar. It was a Christmas gift when I was like 17. I changed the stock pickups with Seymour Duncans and I also changed the pickguard from white to this mother of pearl looking one. Fun fact, I actually sold this guitar when I was a teenager. I always felt so stupid and sorry for selling it that I tracked it down and bought it back like 10 years later. Now it's finally back here with me. Let's hear how it sounds. Defender Stratocaster Richie Sambora Signature. Despite the strange look for being a Strat, it's all completely stuck, with DiMarzio pickups and Floyd Rose. This guitar is from 1996 and it is the oldest guitar I own. It sounds like a Strat, but meanier. Fender Telecaster American Original 60s. This guitar is all stock except the bridge settles. I changed them because the vintage style ones could not be adjusted for fine intonation. I remember buying this guitar online without even trying it. I was really in love with the color and I did the right thing because this guitar plays and sounds amazing. Oh, yes, I do also have a bass, brown, for strings, and it just goes like, boom. See? Okay, well, let's keep going. Moving into acoustic land, we have the Taylor 214 CE, my main acoustic guitar. Such a perfect sound and ready for the mix. I don't need to make any EQ adjustment when I'm recording. Maybe it's a tiny bit expensive, but totally worth it in my opinion. The Ranger 12. 
This is my 12 strings guitar made in Italy by Echo Guitars. It's a very cheap guitar, but it sounds so good for the money. That's why I like it. Actually, I don't play the 12 strings that often, but when I do, it feels so special because it has such a unique sound to it. Also, changing strings on this guitar, yeah, it's not that fun. Okay, let's move into Epiphone and Gibson Paradise. This is my EJ200 CE Natural. It's a $300 guitar that sounds like a $1000 guitar. Yes, it's that good actually. With this jumbo body, it has a huge and deep sound to it. I really love it. The Epiphone Dot. I don't use it that much nowadays, but I used to gig with it when I was playing in a Green Day tribute band. Solid guitar for the price and very good looking. This is her big sister, the Gibson ES-335. This guitar was actually given to me by Gibson when I became a Gibson artist last year. It looks and plays absolutely stunning. And there she is, my favorite guitar of them all. The 2010 Gibson Les Paul Traditional in Honeyburst. It was my very first Gibson guitar. I bought it new in 2010 and I played a lot of gigs with it. Also, as you can see, I managed to get it signed from Slash when I met him in 2014. Despite being my favorite guitar and being signed, I still play it every day. She's not a garage queen. Keeping it slash related, this is my Gibson Les Paul Standard slash signature Anaconda Burst. It's based over a 50s Les Paul Standard, with the exception of the pickups and X shape, besides, of course, this stunning green finish. The Gibson Les Paul Custom Ebony. The queen of Les Paul guitars, super heavy and a very deep and rich sound. Not the easiest guitar to keep it clean and pristine, as you can see, but hey, I want to play them and enjoy them, so it's okay. Usually I keep this guitar in this standard. Let's hear it. The next one is the guitar with the longest name in history, and it is the Gibson Les Paul Gold of Double Gold Darbeck 1957 Rishu Voss. <gasps> okay, and it is one of the best looking guitar I have ever owned. This look is so iconic, super versatile and plays like butter. Huge 57 neck, but I actually do prefer it compared to the 60s. Next we have the Gibson SG Standard Inherited Cherry. Such an iconic guitar and super versatile despite her rock and roll look. I'd like to add a Gibson Maestro Vibrola to it in the future, but we'll see. Oh yeah, the Frank Strat, the Frankie. This is the only guitar in my collection that it doesn't matter which amp you plug her in. She still will have that super raw, mean and rock and roll bite sounds to it. It's completely stock. Fun fact, that dummy neck pickup actually works if you ever want to route it and add it later on. I removed the detune at the moment because it was not very precise and it had some tuning issues. Now let's move to the last guitar of my collection, the Porter Smith Custom 24. This is my main go-to guitar when I want to shred or I need to play some technical stuff. It is super comfortable to play, really small neck, incredibly well built and good looking. This one has also super cool quilted premium top which was a special order from the PRS factory. It is completely stock, I don't need to make any changes on this one. Ok, that was the last guitar in my collection for today. Well, you know me, I may have some guitar coming 
in the near future, maybe. Which guitar do you think I am missing? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao!